if, say, a developmental challenge or issue was identified. So there was a delay of some kind, be it in speech and language, or do you foresee any challenges with the identification of a concern? No, I think that uh, uh, that's the, when families were together like that, all together, they, they were able to um, identify those mm. and then they would give the special attention mm -hmm. and see if they could prop it up. Oh, okay. Or or if, if it wasn't possible to do that, then of course um, in the society which our tradition is, was, then you, you would consider those people, special people, like a gift from the mm -hmm. Creator. Right. Uh, so they were looked on as uh, like something that's really special. Okay. Uh, and, and, that, and that you're lucky to have them. Oh, oh what a wonderful perspective. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And so that's what I mean. It's, uh, that's all the natural way of mm -hmm. seeing. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and uh, that, that was sort of mostly removed. But that used to be a common everyday practice of the Ojibwe, the Mohawks, everybody. Mm -hmm. But like I said, that that was removed from us, mm -hmm. and mostly because of the residential schools oh, and yeah. stuff. It really did a number. It just destroyed families. Yes. And how important do you think is the support of, of the whole family, the extended family, in, 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 in a child's development? Well, the extended family is really, <clears throat> I would say, um, very, very important because it's like your whole, your, it's not just your family, it's your clan, the clan that you come from. Mm -hmm which is run by matril it's a matrilineal yes, system. Which is wonderful. Um, and, uh, but then also the father's side is included because they have clans too. Mm -hmm. so, so actually it's, it's uh, the whole so social structure of tradition is, is a binding. It, it's, it's all made about, it's about binding, mm -hmm. um, making solid that child. Right. to become part of a bigger and a bigger and a bigger mm -hmm. as a human being to the world. Um, <clears throat> for instance, uh, like that, in our language, in the Mohawk language, uh, your mother, we call her Istan, and all her sisters are is called exactly the same thing. Oh, really? So, so a child doesn't have just one mother. Oh. All, all the sisters is, is, is called that too. Okay. And uh, even, even further than that, everybody who's of the age of your mother is also called that. Oh. So not only is your mother's sisters your mother, mm -hmm. but everybody of that age is your mother as well. Okay. But it's the same word. Right. But you grow up in that that world, so you you know who's your biological mother mm -hmm. when you say mother uh, Easter, mm -hmm. and you also know when you when you say your mother sisters that it's a it's a notch below your mother, okay. but it's the same word. Right. And then when it's the regular women who's of your mother's age, and you say Easter to them out of respect. That's another notch from okay. from your biological mother, right. but that's that's uh, not uh, I don't know how you call it. In, how do you, what's the word inherent or or it's it's just part of your psyche as you're growing. Mm -hmm. There's no formal class of all. It's just practice. Right. So you become accustomed to it because it's practice. Right. You don't you don't have formal schooling for it. Yes. So you just grow up knowing <coughs> that. That's... And then and then the word. Istan, which we call mother, comes from the old word, the root word uh, of it is Gatsatsta uh, And that Gatsatsta means 
power and strength. So when you say ishta, it's coming from that root word, gatsastasla. So when you say, your mo- you call your mother, you, if you're my mother, and I say to you, Ishtan, mm-hmm. what I'm saying to you is that you, you're my power and you're my strength. Oh, that's wonderful. So when you say that to the others, mm-hmm. that's what you're saying to them. Oh, okay. it's, it's, you, you can't be the, the respect and so on. And so they bestow that upon that child. Mm. And as that child grows, he has the whole world supporting him. It and, takes a village. <laughs> and, and, yes, yes. And so therefore, and then that's not only that part either. Uh, the word for uh, f- father mm-hmm. in Mohawk is, um, is we say, Lagi'niha. Uh, Lagi'niha. And if you say your uncle, you say, Lagi'niha. Which is almost the same word too. Right. But it's just a little bit different. I was going to say, yeah. it sounds like an another extra notch. syllable. Just yeah. another notch, uh, different. Just like the mother, right. another notch. Even though it's pretty near the same word. Well, when you say, so if you were my father and I talked to you, and I would say, uh, Lagini. But if I'm talking to somebody about my father, I would say, Lagini ha. That means he's my father. But if I'm talking to you, and you're my father, I say, Alagani. And it comes from the word, Wahakani. Mm-hmm. Wahakani means, <clears throat> so when you say this to your dad, you're saying, you loaned it to me that I'm living. Oh. See, the respect. Uh, yes, uh, 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 that's uh, your uh, inherent uh, is a good word. Respect is inherent in the way you address people. So yes. especially father too, the, yeah. you're the one loaned it to me. That it's only my life is yeah. only on loan from you. Yes, yeah. And so when you say uncle, it's the same thing, laginaha, except one notch below. So he also loaned it to you mm-hmm. that you're living. Mm-hmm. But the main one that loaned you your real life is your father, and almost next to that is your uncle. Okay. So, all, so that's why language is important yes. in, in the psyche, because uh, it contains the power of communication yes. of the strong family. That's what was we have to regain mm-hmm. as part of everything. Uh, uh, and I would say Western society too has to relook at that. Oh, the respect factor, <laughs> most definitely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm with you 100 <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah. 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 So those are some of the observations. So you cannot uh, have any program that's uh, about kids, about babies, that's, uh, that is uh, not wanted. Mm-hmm. Every program is very much needed. Okay. You can't get enough of it. Oh. Now the um, the visit, um, the enhanced eighteen month uh, well baby visit. Part of that process is using standardized tools so that theoretically every child is getting the same quality of assessment. Mm-hmm. So there's a tool that the the practitioner uses, and then there's a tool for the parents to complete. It's a checklist about development. And it's essentially, you know, is your child doing these things? Um, what do you feel about the use of such a tool in Aboriginal communities? Well, I think it's helpful yes. because it identifies a need right. of the child. And then, uh, of course, um, there can be a Western way to look at it, how, and also a traditional way to look at mm-hmm. it. Um, but nonetheless, either way, uh, it's identifying a need. Okay. So how well, how well, how you're going to apply a remedy, right? Uh, or something to help them, is is uh, is helpful either way. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so usually amongst the native, um, uh, most of our spiritual people or our, I guess you might call, for lack of a better word, doctor for the Indian people, uh, which we call them seers. Okay. 
we call them seers. And all Indian people has those, even today we still have them. And mostly all the seers that I know, always, uh, they don't fight uh, with the uh, Western doctor. Mm -hmm. They'll say, um, go see them and get checked out. Mm -hmm. And if they, and if, um, uh, or sometimes they'll say, <coughs> uh, I have been to the doctor, the Western doctor, and the Western doctor with their x-ray machines and their, all their analysis of blood and this and that uh, does not find out what's wrong with me. Mm. They, they can't, well, they said nothing wrong with me, but yet I'm sick. Mm -hmm. So then the, the native uh, seer or doctor then we'll look into them and they'll find out mm -hmm. what's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Because they're trained differently. Yes. In, in a spiritual way. Mm -hmm. um, and so they'll identify and then they will have to do certain kind of a ceremonies or things. And then they'll say to them, after you've done that, now go see the doctor, the Western doctor. Now we think of um, sort of standard milestones that you know a child should be meeting at certain ages mm -hmm. so you know they should be walking by this age and they should be saying so many words by this age um, do you think that the milestones are different in Aboriginal culture and tradition than we perceive them in Western culture I don't know if it's how much different it is mm -hmm. Really, because uh, I come from mostly the native world uh, and belief system. Uh, like in my personal life, when I was growing up as a little boy, I never seen a nurse or a doctor mm -hmm. from the America or Canada. Canada. Whenever something happened, uh, my own grandmother fixed it. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if, if it had to be cut, she fixed it. Okay. With herbs and with uh, different kind of traditional medicines. Even uh, one time I fell from a tree, I think it was about 18 foot up. Oh my gosh. And I hit my head on a stone. <laughs> right on the, and it broke my head. Big cut. An unconscious. Uh, no doctor. They took me to grandma, and grandma fixed it. So all my life, grandma's the one who fixed everything mm -hmm. with all her medicine and knowledge, and and mostly it's I guess her love. Yes, grandma's mostly, love is very important. Uh, it was that's the healing part. Yeah. See, and this is where I think some medical Western doctor have some of that, but not like grandma. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, my grandmother will be 105 in February. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like a grandmother's love. <laughs> yeah, 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 especially when they use medicine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but now I will also give you an example. <clears throat> I had a, a, a one daughter, and she's still living. She's now 38 years old. And uh, when she was born, uh, she was about a year and a half and she can't sit up. Usually, I had one uh, cousin, when she was seven months old, she was running, not walking, running. <laughs> but she was bow legged. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, so we watch too mm -hmm. the, if they're delayed in their development or they're fast in their development. Mm -hmm. They go both ways. And um, but my daughter <coughs> was about a year and a half, and she can't sit up. So we used to put pillows in the back and the side of her mm -hmm. to have her sit up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Then she became two years old, and she can't walk. 
Yes, she can. Even uh, stand up, really. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I took her to the Ottawa Children's Hospital mm -hmm. to get an evaluation or to find out what happened. Well, why is this delayed? And uh, they just, they didn't tell me what happened, what's the reason. Mm -hmm. um, and they did a lot of study, blood work and all that. Mm -hmm. And they even they asked me. I remember them asking me that when she was born, there was there dark complications like uh, okay. whatever. Well, she was born with cesarean section, and oh. the doctor said no complication. Right. So they didn't give me no answer over there. Mm. So I went to the children's hospital in Montreal this time. Mm -hmm. Same thing. They took blood. They did all this. Right. But they didn't tell me. What's wrong? Right. And those are well-respected hospitals. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In Canada. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So what I, did I do? I went to see my old friend. Uh, she's passed away now. One of those grandma. And uh, she says, take her to see the grandpa, a medicine society. You know those uh, wooden car faces, mm -hmm. the Iroquois. Mm -hmm. yeah, we call them uh, grandfather, our grandfathers. Oh, okay. And she says to us, "Go over there." Uh, and I went over there, took her, and they did a reading for her. And they says. Um, Go see our grandfathers, the black one and the red one. Because there's different colors and different kinds. And have a feast for her and have have them uh, talk to her. Ask them that. Tell them she can't sit up and she can't stand up, can't walk. And ask them to help her. So we did. We went home and we did that. Within a month, she stand up and she walk. That's remarkable. Within a month, she start to walk. And those other hospital can't do it. No. <laughs> Even to tell me what possibly yeah. happened. Yeah. So then she's now seven years old. And this time she don't talk. Well, she never that that down all this time. Uh, just mumble like and the cat and can't say no words. Mm -hmm. So I took it back over there to the hospital over there in Ottawa. <laughs> Again, no answer. I'm giving them a bad rap, actually. No, <laughs> but I'm I'm sorry. Well, that was your experience. I'm sorry, but that's what that's what yeah. it was. But they. She said her tongue is a little enlarged, but the, other than that, that mm -hmm. it shouldn't be stopping it. So I went, took it back again to the elder, who, who knows how to do that, seeing, and uh, she says, go back again to the grandfather medicine mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, red and black one, the one that helped her before. Mm -hmm. And you tell them that she can't talk. And they ask them if they can help her to talk. So we did it again. By golly, in a couple months, oh words gosh. start to come. So now she can talk. She, oh, some, she talks, but it's hard to understand her. But we can understand and mm -hmm. have conversation with her, but we never could before. So, so we want to work together mm -hmm. where it is possible to work yes. together. And sometime when they can't do it, we, grandma can. Mm. Yeah. But that grandma that we, we I'm talking about has, has died about 15 years ago or more, mm -hmm. maybe 20 years ago. And we sure miss her. Oh, I yeah. bet. Yeah. And the other grandmothers we missed her because when they were around, we were confident, no matter what 
what happens in the world, as long as they're around, we felt secure. You knew they would take care yeah, of you. Yeah. 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 That's a wonderful yeah, feeling yeah. to have as a and child. And those people never down Ottawa or the children's hospital, never. Right. They just said, well, they couldn't see it. Yeah. Something happened, they can't see. Mm -hmm. But we've seen it. <laughs> wow. Now, tell me about being a parent in Aboriginal tradition and culture and, and how, if you can make that comparison, how it may differ from Western ideals of parenting. Um, that's part of what I'm going to talk about oh, today. Oh, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> but um, uh, the big difference, I don't know how much different there is uh, because uh, I didn't grow up in, in uh, Canadian society, American society uh, for my spiritual uh, stuff or my, uh, like I said, I grew up a lot, a lot of it with, uh, with older people and uh, that had these knowledges and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's the one I was with. Mm -hmm. So the the Western part is uh, somewhat superficial to me. I, I don't really know it's, I'm never in, inside of it. Mm -hmm. So that I don't, mm -hmm. I can't tell you the do's and don'ts about it because I, mm -hmm. I didn't grow up with that mm -hmm. much. Well, superficial is a good word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's why I can't say too much about it because I don't know that much. But I do know it's about fair. ours. Yeah. And so here's, and it may be the same. Some mm -hmm. parts may be the same because we're humans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we all love our children. Yes, yes. Yeah. No. Uh, one of the things that is uh, primarily different, I think, or maybe different, maybe not different, is that uh, you know this question about abortion, uh, mm -hmm. the pro and this and that and whatever. Uh, I'm not on either side, but it, but that's not even unfair to say that either without further explanation. When the question of abortion come, there's medicine that grows that can abort. Mm. And our people knows that. But it's said in our tradition or in our spiritual that the, the Creator loves uh, child babies even, and He loves babies so much. But a baby who hasn't been born yet, mm -hmm. he loves them 10, 20, 50 times more than an actual baby. Wow. Okay. Because they haven't become a born yet. Right. So, so they need more attention right. than, a, than a baby because they're already born. Right. So now, we have been given this brain to think and to see. So there's a medicine that can abort, but creator don't like that. Mm. And if somebody's gonna take that baby away, only creator can do it, mm. not you or me. Right. It is not our job. But if you want to abort the medicines over there, that's you, mm -hmm. not me. Right. You're the one who has to live with that yeah. the rest of your life if you do that. Mm -hmm. But I won't dare do it. But I can't stop you. Right. That's you who have to do that. That's your choice. But I would never, never do that. Mm -hmm. But I won't stop you though. Right. So in this abortion question, I, I don't stand with them or against mm -hmm. them, but um, I don't want abortion. Right. But I'm not gonna stop you. Yes. See what I mean? Yeah, so that's, that's very So fair. what category do I go in? There's no category for mm -hmm. me because there's only two ways to look at it in this 
yes. sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and and not she, and um, and that's the same thing with poison. You can choose to drink it if you want to. Mm-hmm. I can't stop you. Well, I've no. heard that pregnant women, um, they're they're very protected, and that um, it's important that they avoid any negativity, yes. any negative yes. words, negative thoughts. Exactly. So that ex- that helps me understand that because yeah. it, now, unborn babies are so important. Yes, and, and not only that, but unborn babies are so so important that it is, it is our teaching that the Creator and the Mother Earth give that man and that woman who are expecting. And the other thing too I mentioned right away is that the, the, the man who's the father is also pregnant, not oh. just the woman. Oh, that's wonderful. That's all Indians know this. Yeah. Jibways, Mohawks, Lakota, Seminole, we all know this. All indigenous people, I think, knows this. Mm-hmm. The real people from all over the world knows this. That, that no such thing as just a woman is pregnant. The man is also mm-hmm. pregnant. That's I think might be different there. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think we're we're going a little more that way. Like I think men are are much more aware and involved now. But that's I like that. No. Because of this, the Mother Earth and Creator gives that man and that woman who are pregnant seven times the normal power that they normally mm-hmm. have with, before pregnancy mm-hmm. in order to ensure that that baby has a safe journey mm-hmm. to this world. So he gives that father and mother seven times the power. Mm-hmm. That's why when you're pregnant, a man or woman is not allowed to hunt. Oh, I didn't know that. Or to fish. Oh. Or to butcher a cow or a pig or or to kill anything for for the whole period of the oh. uh, pregnancy. Because would it be an abuse of that no, power? No, because, because uh, the reason why is uh, if you see blood or if you kill somebody, it's gruesome because they suffer. Oh. So that's going to be transmitted right. to that little baby okay. and that baby can abort because okay. he'll try to copy what you've seen, right. what you felt, and what you heard goes there. Right. So the moment of conception, whatever the mother and father sees, feels, hears, sad or happy all gets transmitted to that little baby and for nine months that little baby every day grow and grow and everything that father and mother seen heard or tasted is going there and that's where that baby learns how to be a human being for nine months through the mother and father Mm -hmm. so whatever you feel the father mother whatever you see it goes there and that's Nine months baby is that father right. and mother. I, I wish we I wish we had more of that in Western culture because it's so true. Like, you know, what you experience during pregnancy has such an impact on that baby. Mm-hmm. This That's is why like, um, uh, and I used to tell this sometime when I did lectures in the university, some professor and it's a professor, not the student, they, they they call it one time they said to me that's a fairy old wife's tale or a fairy tale. That's what he said, professor. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one supposed to know this more than me. <laughs> and he said fairy tale. Oh or my old gosh, wife's tale, no, call it. No, not you know, at all. So, but, but you know, um, they're still learning too, I guess. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, for instance, uh, my grandmother said, uh, if you're going up the stairs at your house and you have maybe left your wallet downstairs and when you go up the stairs and you're halfway up the stairs and you remember your wallet's on the table, don't turn around halfway up the stairs and come down and go get your wallet. Go all the way up the stairs till you get to the top, then turn around and go get your wallet if you want to. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Because that's going to go into your baby too. Okay. So when the baby gets ready to be born, he's coming in the birth canal. He gets halfway oh. and he'll say, oh, I forgot something. And he's going to try to go. <laughs> See, and the mother is going to have a hard time right. to have a labor. So yeah. everything has to go oh, okay. in a, in yeah. a harmony, in a, in a right. finish your job. Right. Complete it. Yes. Don't do half. Right. Don't take it apart. Wow. Yeah. For nine months, we have. Yes. Even so, you really have to be very thoughtful. Even yeah. even uh, our grandmother and those older people told us, if you're pregnant, man or woman, especially the woman, even more than the men, but they're them too. Don't stand at the window, and look out for a long time. Oh, because the baby then might yeah. move down the birth canal and. So so one time, they opened the window and says, "Now go crawl up that window, and come back, the same way. Don't block. Oh, okay. Don't be blinded by it, because oh. there's a barrier. Right. So don't be staring like that. Oh, okay. It's okay, to look a little while, but don't stare. Right. And so for nine months, we are told not to go in where there's lots of people. Don't go where there's not a big dance or mm-hmm. for nine months you've got to be careful what, what you're doing. Because the reason why is uh, if you go where there's a large group of people, maybe you'll see somebody that's got a great big uh, oh. strawberry... Uh, like a mangioma, a, yes, uh-huh, I know what you're talking here, about. Or Maybe you see somebody got big humpback, or yeah. old man, or something, a woman, right. or maybe you see somebody cripple. And and if you see them, you you, you naturally, because you never see that regularly, right. so you always right. trying to look extra long. Yeah. And that's why you don't go to those oh, big okay. people, because you, when you see that, that can go into that baby mm-hmm. transfer there. Right. And the baby will be born like that. Right. So that's why you're, they don't want you to go where there's okay. lots of people, or yeah. big dances. Oh, you might okay. see that. Okay. See, that's, that's even way before the baby's born. Yes. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. From yeah. day, from, like you yeah. said, from conception, there's so much happening. Yeah. And so also, uh, our grandmother told us that also for nine months, um, don't argue. Your husband and wife, mm. don't argue. Mm-hmm. It's forbidden to argue. So if something happens, um, and usually the woman is the one that wants to argue, cause, uh, because the baby is growing and it touches the different nerves in her stomach. Mm-hmm. And so it uncontrollably makes her irritable. Uh, she can't hardly help it like, to yeah. control herself. So um, sometimes she'll be angry with husband over something that's nothing, nothing, because of the baby, see, right. but it's not nobody's fault, it's just no. that's the way it is. So, our grandmother says, That means, to, she said to me, So, for nine months, you have to become a pillow. Oh, so oh. if your wife is, is, try to hit you or try to verbally say mm-hmm. something to you, you must be like a pillow oh, and I don't like hit that. back. Yeah. Don't argue back either. I just take it like a pillow, to, mm-hmm. uh, take the cushion for her and the baby. Yeah. And uh, uh, and if you can't take it, just go out and walk mm-hmm. somewhere in the woods and 20 minutes to come mm-hmm. back and everything be okay. Mm-hmm. Then the another part, remember when I said that uh, the Creator gives the man and the woman seven times the power mm-hmm. in order to ensure a baby come here? And safely has a good journey. Well, uh, so you're not supposed to, man or woman, because they're both pregnant, just go any place because you have seven times power than you normally have. Mm-hmm. So now you're like an x ray machine with its radiation. Right. <laughs> you have this extra sensory thing, and there's no choice because it's already back there. So, one time, um, 
So if you go somewhere to visit, you can't go there un unannounced. You gotta let them know ahead of time if you're pregnant. Right. So it gives them a chance to get ready to receive you because you got seven times smaller yeah. than. And um, and also, when somebody dies. That person is also given seven times the power, just like a baby coming to the world. Right. When you leave the world, you have right. to have also seven times to get out of this world. Right, okay. So death and birth is the same. Oh, okay. They're both celebration. Right. It's both uh, celebration of, um, of part of our life, world, our really. life. Yeah, yeah. so it, it requires the same power. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, one time, with that in mind, when the people are older people, like my grandma and them, they were famous. They would have these glass gallon jugs, and they would go in the woods or in the swamp or mountains, and they would get all kind of herbs and things, and they knew a lot of it. <clears throat> and they would make these tonics out of it, juice. They had a big, big process. And they would take a white cloth and cover that jug. And so nobody sees it. Because you and I has the power too. Our eyes has a radiation too. Mm -hmm. So just the fact they were together, it depends on what you're carrying, what you're in here. And me too. Does it harmonize? Does it clash? Right. Does it repel? It depends what kind of right. state of mind you have. Mm -hmm. That's old traditional knowledge. So uh, that's why they cover it, their medicine, okay. so that you can't interfere with its potency, right. its power. It's not meant for her. So when they make this gallon medicine, they don't share it with nobody. Yet our culture teaches to share, mm -hmm. but that one you don't. Okay. Because when that was prepared, the the prayers or the speeches that was made to prepare it was all said your name okay. not tom porter or not her name okay. it was prepared for the medicine to help you oh, your name okay. so that's why that's they don't share that because okay. it was only destructed for you right so it's made specifically for yeah. one person yeah that's why they cover oh, it so, so they, they don't want anybody else yeah, looking at yeah. it yeah so it remains powerful. You see how, yes. how different? That's yeah. what, I don't know if Americans do that. Okay. No. <laughs> no, I can tell you that. <laughs> so, so that's one. No. Bit, so, been, and so, so one time when I first got married, I was very not used to it. So even to get pregnant, I, I, didn't never be, I was never pregnant before. So... <laughs> So, and I, and I always go to my grandmother's house all the time. That's where I grew up. So one time I, I was passing my, my grandma's house and I, I went in there and of course, I, I don't knock the door, I just go in because that's where I grew up. And I caught her drinking her medicine. She had that gallon jug and sitting on a table and she had just poured a glass and she said, ah, she says that to me. That means, oh, you ruined my medicine because I'm pregnant. Oh, so that seven and you didn't times, let her know you were coming. No, yeah, she and I had forgot too. Yeah. Although I know that, but mm -hmm. I just, I just so used to going to her yeah. house, I kind of forgot that. Until she said that, she made me feel like no good. I mean, she made me feel bad. Because I know how how hard it is to go yeah. away in the woods and pick yeah. medicine. Then you gotta dry it, wash it, dry it. Yeah. Then you gotta cook it. Then you gotta all this stuff. And here, I just ruined her medicine. Mm. And uh, they used that medicine to lubricate their joints, oh. to, to make their blood thinner, so they feel good. That's why they call it tonic for the older oh, people. Okay. And everybody is old. Used to when I was a little boy. All used to drink that kind of medicine. Mm -hmm. That's why they could live to be 100 years old, 110 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they used to live to be old, older days. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Today, they don't live long. Yeah. Um, but anyway, 
So I ruined her medicine, and I felt so bad because it has seven times power. Yeah. So it, it neutralizes yes. medicine. Yes. And uh, she noticed that I felt so bad, and I was so I was. I, and I said, "Oh, I didn't mean to do that." I said, "I forgot." <laughs> she looked at me, laughed a little bit. She said, "That's okay." She says, "Come over here." So I went over there. She says, what I want you to do is uh, take that glass that's got medicine in there and drink one swallow of it. And then she says, and then put your finger in that jug and she turned it till it, my finger touched it. And she says, now my medicine is seven times more stronger than it was before. Oh, smart so lady. <laughs> she took a negative and yes. put it into the positive. And that's what all people do. Yeah. When there's sadness, they will find a way to multiply happiness to it. See, that's what's missing. Yeah. You know, I wish that young people would learn, regardless of the culture, yeah. would learn this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a, I wrote a book, uh, I have some of it here. Call, and Grandma said, it's a lot of the teachings like oh, I'm telling you right yes, now. yes, Jean mentioned that. Yeah, she, she said, said she uses it all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're using it now in colleges across America oh, yeah. and Canada. And not all of them, but a lot of them as part of their curriculum. Oh. Of course, I, when we wrote it, I never thought it was going to be an use for that. But, well, but it's good it is because young people is. are going to... Yeah. 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 Well, when I was in school, which is a long time ago, we certainly learned mm -hmm. nothing of Aboriginal tradition yeah. and culture. Yeah. Now, when the baby is ready to be born, like my grandmother, like for instance, when I was, before I was born, I don't know if it was a month or two months before I was born, because my grandmother was a, a seer lady too. She knew that I was going to be a boy, so okay. she gave me the name Shago Gunyungwas before I was born, because she know, because she knows that. That's the name I carry. But she's the one who gave me that name. And what does that mean? The one who wins. Oh. Yeah, Shago Gunyungwas. It's a belong to the bear clan. Anyway, um, so now when the baby is born, they will they will burn tobacco, make a, a spiritual speaking. Like a, I guess in America they call it prayer. Mm -hmm. Everything go good, and then they use medicine too, and then baby is born. And what they say too, and uh, we try to tell the doctor, uh, don't say nothing when, uh, if the doctor's there in the hospital. Uh, don't say nothing. Uh, try not to say nothing when that baby's coming. Okay. Because we don't want that baby to hear English or French. Oh, okay. We want the first word for that baby to hear is Mohawk. Right. So most doctors try to do it. Oh, good. Well, I'm if you they... talk to them ahead of time, yeah. uh, some won't, but most of them will, because mm -hmm. uh, they're humans. Mm -hmm. And if you explain it to them, mm -hmm. they do. And the other thing is, uh, uh, so when the baby is born, once they clear the passage and all that, the, the, then the father or uncle takes the baby, and they talk for the baby for about one hour oh, before wow. anything. And they say first, they hold the baby up, Father, and say, Creator, thank you. You sent my daughter and my son. And now this name came from my baby's mother's faith people. This is the name, Creator, that he, this baby will have while he dwells on earth. Oh. And give it, tell the Creator what's the baby's right. name and tell the baby that's his name now. So is it always the mother's family that chooses the name? Yeah, okay. always it's the mother because it's natural right. anyway. Okay. And then you talk to the, after you say that, then you, you, you introduce yourself that you're the father. And uh, you, 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 we're going to be together for many years mm -hmm. uh, till I'm living and you're living. I'm your father and you're my son. That's what you say. 
then when you finish that, then you, you talk to the earth, Mother Earth, and you tell the Mother Earth what's this little baby's name. And then you say, Mother Earth, I want you to help my son or my daughter as long as the Creator gave them to live on the Mother Earth. You take care of them, nourish them, support them, because she's the mother of all. Mm. And my son, and you say his name, this earth is your mother. I always love your mother oh, forever. I love that. And as long as you love her and respect her, she will help you through all your life. So never hurt your mother earth. Then talk to the water, the spirit of the rivers and water, and says, water, this is my son's name. And I want you to quench his thirst every day as the Creator intended and bathe him and keep him clean. And I introduce you, waters of the world, to my son. This is his name. And my son, this is the waters of the world, creek and rivers and ocean. Mm -hmm. They will quench your thirst as long as you live. Mm -hmm. I always have a respect for the water for their living spirit and they will help you to live as long as you live. It goes on to all of the living things. It takes about one hour. So you introduce your little kid, little baby, just seconds after they're born oh, to the world they live in. What a wonderful tradition. And that's oh. that's what every baby, this real tradition baby oh, goes through. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. What a wonderful mm -hmm. way to bring a baby into the yeah, world. Yeah, so when you're talking about babies there's nothing we can do that's too much or interfering. Okay. All right. No matter. You know, they need everything. Yeah. All attention. This has been a privilege to speak to you. Thank you so much.